Thank you, Julie. Thank you, Julian. Uh, well, Wills, Professor Isabel Capron was, uh, is a physical chemist. I am a chemical engineer who entered this realm of picketing emulsions, mostly out of necessity. So you see to which point they are useful, they are practical. Uh, we did not enter them out of intention to publish something or to get into fashion. It was just because we thought it was the best way to incorporate some things that we were doing into paper and also to do some uh, film form materials. So yeah, uh, this will have some weight for the practical application, for the applications, uh, for giving me the redundance. But I will also talk a little bit of physical chemistry, not so in depth as Professor Capron said, but, uh, well, I will talk in terms of, of interface tension and giving out more questions than answers. Well, uh, let's begin by a well-known fact. An ionic nanocellulose, even highly charged, work for oil and water emulsions. They, they are mostly prepared by temp oxidative, uh, temp oxidation of cellulose but carboxymethyls nanofibers, or even esterification with the acids, such as oxalic acid, also with that to carboxylate groups. Generally speaking, the point is taking advantage of the effective uh, electrostatic repulsion between fibrils, but it's not that simple. Well, to many researchers, in fact, the Oxidized, temp oxidized cellulose nanofibers seem a better choice than, let's say, nominally neutral nanocellulose. And I'm saying nominally neutral because they will have always significant zeta potential in water, right? Well, uh, so yeah, temp, uh, temp oxidized nanocellulose, carboxymethyl nanocellulose, oxalic acid nanocellulose, all of these are ways to do anionic nanofibers or even nanocrystals. I am focusing here uh, on two nanofibers. I think Professor Caprona already talked a lot uh, insights about nanocrystals. So now let's get into our recent work because all of this has been started in 2022. And we have been able to stabilize with temp oxidized nanofibers and even oxalic oxidized uh, nanofibers, a lot of different organic phases Time essential oil, mostly hydrophobic, even more hydrophobic rosemary therpenes, uh, beeswax, which is solid at room temperature, so that's entering the realm of suspensions. Uh, would we pick any suspensions, maybe, or Ramsden suspensions, now that I know about this fact? And even things with permanent dipole, such as chloroform and something that excites me particularly, which is aniline. Uh, and this was really easy to stabilize. Uh, yes, the density being allied to that of water will, would surely help. But what if these uh, primary amino groups of aniline uh, are forming some ammonium carboxylate interactions, ionic interactions, with tempoxidized nanocellulose? Uh, I don't know, between the PKA of tempoxidized nanocellulose and the PKB of aniline, and that's a broad range of pH. So why not? And why was it so easy? The point is that with these nanofibers, anything seems to fit. Uh, now, my two cents here are, is that negatively charged nanofibers are not better, not worse than tempo oxidized nanofibers. Uh, on one hand, as Professor Capron said, some planes of nanocellulose are preferentially exposed to the oil droplet, but uh, in the case of carboxylate groups or sulfate groups or phosphate groups, they are voluminous and hydra highly hydrated, highly water-loving. So even if their position is equatorial instead of axial, I mean, it's not the 2OO, but in, if in pigment material, uh, if they are not properly screened or shielded, uh, they will invade, their hydration spheres will invade 
the so-called hydrophobic areas, or as Professor Capron said, less hydrophilic areas of cellulose, right? Uh, th that was a simple molecular dynamics observation, uh, and it and there was only one carboxylate for one cellulose unit. So uh, you can see how water enters. Um, while neutral nanocellulose will be uh, incompletely fibrillated even after homogenizing a lot, the great surface area of an ionic nanocellulose will grant us a lot of additive interactions, hypothetically. Uh, likewise, due to, also due to this, um, neutral nanocellulose will be able to restrict coalescence to a certain point. But, and once we reach this point, these emulsions will be less polydispersed than those attained with anionic nanofibers. That could be a good point. So while we will we'll probably have micro-sized droplets in the case of neutral, nominally neutral nanofibers, uh, we will have a mixture of nanometric and micrometric droplets in the case of an ionic nanocellulose stabilized emulsions. They will be, also due to the charge and the high isotope potential, very stable in time, even more than uh, those with neutral nanocellulose, which are already quite stable. And of course, we are talking about things that can be protonated, protonated, all of that. So uh, an ionic nanocellulose will be always be sensitive to ions, including the hydrogen ion. And this may be counterintuitive, but cationic uh, nanofibers won't stay like negatively charged, but opposed. They, they will sit somewhere in between. Uh, they mostly done with quaternary ammonium groups with no hydrogen bonding cap capabilities. We will have some properties of the neutral ones and the charged ones because their effective repulsion will be lower. They cannot, uh, as I said, establish with this quaternary ammonium group hydrogen bonds. So yes, their properties will lie somewhere in between. But let's give a closer look. So this is the typical look of emulsions of essential oils and even beeswax with an ionic nanocellulose, very polydispersed, and they do not move. I, uh, this microscope did not have the function of record video, but we could see no motion. So uh, they hint for some rheological hindrance. Uh, but, and I think I can do the same as Professor Capron and put some, yes, some laser here. You can see that when we have a microfiber that resisted a uh, fibrillation, and I would say this fiber resisted oxidation as well, droplets go to that, oil droplets go to that. Uh, but I will show uh, a particular case in which no absorption was detected. Um, and seemingly, the more hydrophobic the oil we try to stabilize is, the more spherical particles are, and the more frequent these clusters of perfectly spherical droplets are found to be. This is, uh, for instance, uh, after ultra thoraxes, 6,000 RPM uh, for only two minutes. We didn't try to go to narrow emulsions but it may be a possibility. And uh, by the way, this has this have no salt addition. So how could we explain this? Well, if uh, nanofibers are effectively absorbed onto this uh, droplet surface, the DLV theory would predict that this electrostatic repulsion between equally charged nanofibers will outweigh the attraction and result in a high energy barrier that droplets and cluster of particles cannot meet. So they don't coalesce. But is it the only mechanism of uh, stabilization? Well, if droplets don't move, they won't meet and they won't coalesce either. So actually absorption, like, Having the an absorption distortion equilibrium shift, shifted to absorption is not necessarily is not strictly required. Um, 
this detachment equation was already shown in the presentation of Professor Capron. And yes, the detachment energy, the energy that we have to supply for detachment is directly proportional to the interfacial tension between the oil phase and the water phase, and also to the square of the southern radius of the particle. So this is why uh, in some emulsions, we tend to have these big particles because it's the moment in which uh, we have a favorable absorption. So what happens when this is not met? Compare, for instance, what we had for uh, thyme oil on a fiber versus what we have with very, very little, small, and these have not been homogenized. They are close to the emulsions, but this has not been homogenized, just the ultra rotor rotorstator. Um, chloroform droplets and some negatively charged microfibrils. Well, they do not seem to absorb. Maybe there are true nanofibers that we cannot see by optical microscopy, so we cannot rule out the possibility. But if we take into account this small size, uh, the relatively low interfacial tension of chloroform water, and the fact that they didn't move, these droplets, uh, this suggests that this could be a case of rheological stabilization. Also, oh, I should have silenced that. What happens? Well, what happens with any line whose interfacial tension is below six millinewton per meter? Well, uh, seemingly the low density difference may help as well, but, but these emulsions of aniline water with nanocellulose had been prepared like one week ago and they remain the same. So let's go fast for the applications. Uh, yes, we can do films. That was one of our initial objectives. And these films, for instance, can be used to carry some essential oils, to carry some sensory molecules for detecting some pollutants. And it, in particular, the case of aniline, while we use uh, nanopapers containing dipizone for detecting mercury, well, aniline films, aniline nanocellulose films, are intended to detect T and T, tiny trotulin, not dynamite like in the ACDC song, but the presentation is not about that. Well, as I said, nanocellulose films can carry essential oils and they can be responsible for a slow release. So yes, they can be used for many sorts of drug delivery. So in then uh, antioxidant properties, once we extract the oil with ethanol, because to water and to air, they retain a lot. Uh, so they show they retain this oil that has proved antioxidant and antimicrobial properties to both gram-negative and gram-positive bacteria. But we, uh, we have as one of our primary objectives, the paper coating as well, the coating of paper sheets. And with a 20% content of beeswax, we got a good coverage of the paper sheet and high water contact angle. So this is a way to provide paper with hydrophobicity and just try at an industrial level to coat with beeswax alone. You won't succeed. You do need some stabilization. And if it's in an aqueous medium, much better. So one of the things, one of the ways that nanocellulose helps coating is by being a thickener. And this is where negative charge play also a vital role because of the electroviscous effect, uh, considering that the presence of these negatively charged carboxylate groups will increase the nominal charge and then the divide length, and it will trap more water molecules hindering their mobility and then resulting in a higher viscosity values. Um, I didn't silence that, but it's intentional because the, um, this analyte is mercury and it's playing Gustav Holtz mercury flown from the planet suite. But uh, in the video below, we when we have tetramethylbenzidine, if we drop some rather concentrated ferric chloride solution, we don't only totally oxidize the tetramethylbenzidine to its blue state, 
but also break the emulsion, I guess, because of some sort of chaotropic effect from iron three chloride. Uh, because uh, if we do the same with sodium chloride, it's not really the same. So uh, let's get into more sophisticated applications. But uh, the point is that this has been already covered in a better way by Professor Capron. So yeah, emulsion polymerization and even using nanocellulose for templating is quite a hot topic that can be developed further with many different monomers. Uh, at the moment, it seems to work, especially with free radical polymerization. But why not exploring some things? I, I mean, I, I said that I was particularly excited by anilining water emulsion stabilized by nanocellulose. So could I polymerize the analyte with some persulfate in these systems? Well, maybe. Uh, it's a matter of trying. And this templating, I have to say, reminds me of the molecular imprinting mo mo polymerization that was presented by Gunther Booth in 1972. And well, this year, seemingly the Nobel Prizes for quantum dots, maybe for imprinting, we will have a Nobel Prize as well in future years. That's uh, especially considering all these developments. So from a mechanistic point of view, we, we should address some pending issues, it's, it's my opinion, because uh, most studies on molecular dynamics and fundamental research on how emulsions work is absorption on the 200 plane, on axial planes in general. Uh, well, this is normally trying hexadecane or other alkanes as the old phase and native cellulose or screen sulfated cellulose as the stabilizer. But what if this is not the case? So we need some alternatives to this, like what is going to be attained with varying quantities with increasing substitution of carboxylate groups? Will desorption be favored? Probably, but to what extent? And from the side of the liquid, I say I was saying I was particularly excited by aniline emulsions, but I don't know what's happening there. I know I didn't even need ultra turax. This was magnetic agitation. This was also eased by the density difference, the low density difference. But what happens? when the interfacial tension is low and why it still works. So I think I mostly presented the conclusions along the presentation. So if you find it proper, I could stop talking right here, right? So I wanted to thank all of you, of all of the NOI fellows, and I'm open to discussion.